So we were looking at sequences yesterday. And a sequence is a uh, for our purpose, infinite list of numbers. And there are multiple ways to define sequences. For example, we talked about recursive sequences that show up a lot in computer algorithms. But for our purposes, we're going to be using sequences in a pretty specialized way in this class. For our purposes, um, a sequence is going to have its elements explicitly defined by an expression. So for example, you might have a sub n equals n squared plus one divided by two to the n, just picking something out of the air. And for example, then the third element of this sequence three squared plus one over two cubed is 10 eighths or five fourths if you reduce it. In general, when we're working with sequences, we're interested in the idea that um, the sequence is going to approach something. Like I mentioned a computer algorithm, like Newton's method. What Newton's method does, if you a moment to finish writing before I switch frames, What Newton's method does, it's a root finding method. And the user inputs um, a guess. I mentioned this yesterday. But in a lot of algorithms, we start our list from zero instead of one. And Newton's method will use a sub zero to generate a sub one. It will use a sub one to generate a sub two. And so on. So it will generate the sequence. And the point of Newton's method is that the elements in this sequence are getting closer and closer to the root. That's how it's root finding. And we express this idea that the numbers in this sequence are getting closer and closer to the root, borrowing notation from calc to this one and calc to this two. We say that the limit as A goes to infinity as n goes to infinity of a sub n equals the root. Um, again, 
these subscripts, you see N, you see I, you see J. It's not significant that I used N here, but I here. I could just as easily write the limit as I goes to infinity of A sub I. I think N gets used a lot just because people get sick of dotting their I's and J's. I think it's uh, not anything more significant than that. So we have the idea that a limit can approach a number. And this, this raises what I think is a pretty natural question. Well, if a limit, if a sequence approaches a number, how do we find that number? And there's, you, you're probably sick of hearing this by now, but it's true of so much in account to this that there's no one size fits all way of finding limits. We didn't have a one size fits all method back when we were looking at functions. We don't have a one size fits all method now. But the most, the most usual method, in fact, maybe the only method we'll use in this class, goes back to the idea, let me circle it, that if a sequence is defined in this way, a sub n equals some expression of n, then you can kind of think of a sequence as being generated by a function. And we do have limits of functions. We might not have a one size fits all method, but it is something we've looked at. In particular, we've looked at L'Hopital's rule this semester. So let's investigate, let's find a limit using this idea to demonstrate how it works. We have, we'll use the same A sub N that we had here, N squared plus one over two to the N. And the idea if where, let me see, let me write this explicitly, that our goal is to find the limit as n goes to infinity, bless you, of this thing. So what we can do, I know we're not super used to using n as a variable, but this a sub n can also be thought of as defining a function. F of n equals n squared plus one over two to the n. And we've taken the limits of functions before. And if we can find the limit of this function, then we've also found the limit of the sequence. 
those two limits will be the same. So then the question <laughs> becomes, well, can we find the limit as n goes to infinity of n squared plus one over two to the n? Again, as if we had a function instead of a C. Um, and I'm going to switch to a new frame so that we're not scrunched in the bottom of this, but let's make the starting observation that this is an indeterminate form. As n is getting really big, n squared plus one is getting really big, and two to the n is getting really big. So this is infinity over infinity. <laughs> and again, I think the reason that Lobatow's rule gets taught in calculus two, you could teach it in calculus one, it only requires limits and derivatives, we present that material in calculus one, but at least as far as calculus classes go, um, the main application of Lopetow's rule is going to be these sequence problems. So I think the rationale was, well, put it where we're going to use it. This, uh, if you were doing this problem by hand at home, my guess is you would have to look something up. Um, this isn't a criticism, to be clear. We learned how to differentiate exponential functions other than e to the n back in calculus one, and we spent maybe five minutes on it. So I assume that probably most of us don't remember how to differentiate two to the power of n. Um, the derivative of two to the power of n is the natural log of two times two to the n. So exponential functions other than e get natural logs attached to them when you take the derivative. But the derivative of n squared plus one is simpler. And now this is still indeterminate. Two times infinity is infinity. Obviously, that's a kind of informal way of putting it, but two times infinity is infinity, and two to the power of infinity times a number is infinity. So this is still infinity over infinity. And we can hit this with Lopetow's rule a second time. We sometimes use this notation if we don't want to forget, you know, looking back at our notes, what are we doing here? We're using Lopetow's rule. Anyway. The derivative of 2n is 2. Uh, don't get intimidated by that denominator. 
the natural log of 2 might look ugly, but it's just a constant. It just stays put when we take the derivative. And then we take the derivative of 2 to the n. And we get the natural log of uh, 2 times 2 to the n. And this is no longer indeterminate. And if you just, if you just crammed L'Hopital's rule for the test and then sort of forgot it, I would go back and review that section because we are going to be using it frequently in in this sequences and series stuff. Um, in particular, when we talked about L'Hopital's rule and indeterminate forms, we also reviewed the determinate forms, the, um, the stuff that doesn't require any special rules to take. And a constant divided by infinity is zero. And I put those quotation marks around the equal sign just to emphasize that my notation here is very informal. That thing on the left of the equal Equal sign is a number. That thing on the right of the equal sign doesn't exist, formally speaking. You can't divide a real number by infinity, but I hope that it's that it's clear what I'm trying to get across with this. Um, if the top is a constant and the bottom is going to infinity, then the limit is zero. And we found the limit of a function using L'Hopital's rule, but Going back to what I said here, if you find the limit of the function, you found the limit of the sequence. So this sequence of numbers is going to zero, which we could maybe haven't used my calculators table feature in a Coons age, but we can maybe look at this sequence, give our calculator a moment to warm up. Let's see, let me... I'm going to have to have my back to you briefly because I need to see these buttons. There we go. And I know online students aren't seeing this yet. N squared plus one over two to the N. Go to, there's no like sequences command in your calculator, but you can go to y equals the place where you'd graph, and you can enter your sequence. It's going to have to be x squared plus one. That's just how your calculator operates. You can't use variables other than x. And there's um, above the graph, there's the lesser used table option. If you press 
table is in blue. If you press the blue second button, our calculator is color coded. And then press table. Here's starting at zero, but X sub um, A sub zero, A sub one, A sub two, A sub three, A sub four, and so on. And my claim is that this sequence is getting closer and closer to zero. And we're certainly seeing that A sub 45. Uh, remember what this scientific notation means. It means move the decimal place left 11 places. So e, um, A sub 45 is 0 0.0000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000
over the natural logarithm. Let's see if we can take this limit. And we should think these through. I mean, a lot of the time, maybe most of the time, we will wind up using L'Hopital's rule. But if we just jump in and use L'Hopital's rule, we're making a mistake. L'Hopital's rule only works for indeterminate forms. Infinity over infinity over or zero over zero. So we should always make sure it's appropriate before we dive in and use it. But infinity squared is infinity, speaking informally, and the natural log of infinity is infinity. So this is indeterminate. It's um, infinity over infinity. Yeah. So the derivative of n squared plus one. Again, I know this can be slightly confusing because we're used to thinking of n as a constant, not a variable. And of course, the derivative of a constant would be zero. Again, I have to emphasize we're treating n like our variable here. The derivative of the natural log is one over n. And if we simplify this ever so slightly, this is 2n squared. Infinity squared is infinity times two is still infinity. So this limit is infinite. And I mean, I know I say that as if it's always sort of awkward to speak about. If I say the limit is infinity, it makes it sound like the limit exists. Um, this limit does not exist, and the specific way it fails to exist is that it's approaching infinity yeah. instead of a number. So, sequences um, can converge and not converge and diverge. Um, I think I used that uh, terminology uh, yesterday, but just to be sure. We are borrowing Borrowing terminology from improper integrals here. An improper integral could exist or it could not. And just as with improper integrals, if, the, if this limit exists, we say the series converges. If this limit doesn't exist, we say the series diverges. So series can either converge or diverge. <laughs> 
Um, we can work this this sort of idea that I presented on this frame that we can think of series sort of as defining functions. This idea gives us some basic rules for working with series. Like, what if our series is a fraction? Like a sub n equals the arc tangent of x divided by, I scarcely even know what to put in the denominator. Let me fix that. Say that we have a series that looks like this. It's a pretty, uh, pretty goofy example, I admit. But you can think of this as a sub n equals b sub n divided by c sub n. And B sub N is the arc tangent of N, and C sub N is the arc tangent of N plus three. And if we're interested in a limit, The limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n. Well, if we had a function that was a fraction and we wanted its limit, the limit of a fraction is the fraction of the limit. And that's true for sequences as well. So limit as n goes to infinity of the arc tangent is pi over two. The limit as n goes to infinity of the arc tangent plus three is pi over two plus three. But I have to, I have to level with you. Um, this kind of, this kind of rule is almost never going to be useful in practice. And the reason it's almost never going to be useful in the practice is that all of these limit rules that we learned had a requirement, specifically the requirement that the individual limits all exist. So going back here, if we want to find the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n, well, the limit as n goes to infinity of n squared plus one doesn't exist. And the limit as n goes to infinity of the natural log of n doesn't exist. So this rule lets us down. We can't use it because the individual limits don't exist. 
And 99 times out of 100, that's going to be the case. I struggled to uh, come up with a sequence where you could use this rule. You'll notice I said, okay, the limit, the limit as n goes to infinity of the arc tangent exists. What's another good function where the limit exists? And then I couldn't think of a simple one, so I gave us the arc tangent plus three. Yeah, um, this is, I mean, you should be aware that we can work with sequences, basically like functions, but 99% of the time, it's going to be either a determinate form or L'Hopital's rule. <laughs> Well, that's the end of this section, but we have some time left. I mean, I guess technically we have about 25 minutes. I normally keep all of these section, all of these lessons to 50 minutes. So that's at least touched on section 10.2.